All right, hello everyone. This is Jason here at the Whistle Shop in Waterford, Michigan. I'm doing a video here for Francine at the Jefferson Historic Railway in Jefferson, Texas. This is their whistle manifold that is now complete and will be on the truck tomorrow on Monday and should arrive before the weekend. I want to go over a few things with you, Francine, and possibly Brian Riley from Texas. Uh, so if I'm not, I know I'm not going to be able to travel down there to Texas to help you guys out this time, but I know Brian's in the general area, so he can help you guys out. But let's take a closer look here at what exactly in, is involved with your manifold. It's not too hard to figure out, but. I'm going to do a walk around here with you and explain some things so that uh, you have this video as reference. Um, as we had talked about on the phone, um, you wanted to have two whistle ports that were two inch diameter. That's these two here on the end. And if you notice, they're closer towards where the steam or air goes into the manifold. The bigger the diameter of inlet to the whistle, the more steam or air it's going to consume. So I wanted those to be on the end closest to where the steam or air goes into so it's not starving itself by the time it gets all the way down to the very end of the manifold. Uh, so there's two of those. There's two two-inch uh, pipe thread nipples here that are welded in for when you get your whistle valves and you can put whistle valves on those. The next three, we step down a size to inch and a half. So you got one, two, and three at an inch and a half. The next five are one inch diameter. So you got one, two, three, four, and five as your last one. So there's ten all together on this manifold. Um, everything on this manifold as far as the pipe is made out of schedule 80 uh, very thick heavy wall pipe so you have no worries about anything breaking or coming loose on you um, I'm gonna do a close-up here if I can I don't know I know our lighting's not very good here in this garage but all the welds that I have done uh, before I actually start welding I will heat both of the pieces of steel up together uh, get them very hot so that they're more malleable when it comes time to weld them. So these welds flowed really nice and they're all watertight now. So you have no problems with any leakage of any kind. Uh, the hydro test went really good on this. Uh, didn't have any spots of issues, uh, no pinholes or nothing in it. It helps to have any metal you're working with uh, heated up first before you weld it together especially if it's cold out and up here in Michigan we've only seen weather so far in the 50s mid 50s maybe 60 two or three times yet this year we're falling really behind on the weather and how warm it's supposed to be so that's a separate issue um, on the opposite end of your whistle manifold here there's this one inch diameter pipe that comes off the bottom you need to put a valve on here, and I'll show you over here on my whistle valve. Um, it could be a ball valve like this, or it could be a gate valve like this one. I would prefer, if it were me building the, uh, the whistle manifold, I would prefer a gate valve. It's much easier to open and close. Um, again, these are these are steam, steam rated valves. Um, I've seen these same type of valves also used on uh, steam tractor engines that some friends of mine have. Um, you're going to want to put one on the bottom of this. Now the reason that you want to have a valve on the bottom of this is when you do get your boiler back up and running in service for your steam train, you want to drain the condensation, the water that will gather in the bottom of this pipe, you'll drain it out the opposite end from where the steam comes in. When you're heating your pipe up as the steam flows through, by the time the heat reaches down here, it's going to have all the moisture in here because 
the further away you are from your your heat source, the colder your your uh, your materials are going to be, and they're going to tend to turn the, the steam back into water. But after a period of time, say maybe an hour or so, this whole thing will be just about as warm as the temperature of your boiler, so you won't have much of a problem with uh, water or condensation in the bottom, but you do need to have that valve in here so that you can drain that moisture and water out of here. You don't need to open this valve up. Only when you first, when you go to start blowing whistles, I would drain the water out, much like you would an air compressor. You run an air compressor for a while. If the air compressor sits, moisture builds up in the bottom. You drain it out, and then you run it. You run your air compressor. Same principle with uh, this whistle manifold. Uh, the ends have the caps welded into them. Um, those are recessed on the inside. Same with the other side where the steam goes into. This is your flexible steam line. It is an inch and a quarter pipe thread on the end. And it is rated for um, 270 pounds of steam. We'll see right right there on the hose 270 psi steam drain drain after use so every time you're done with this line do the same thing uh, try to blow it out with an air compressor if you've used it on steam blow the, blow the moisture and condensation out that hooks up to the end of your your uh, whistle manifold here where your steam inlet right air and will go inside this is an inch and a half pipe thread that is an inch and a quarter okay you'll need a reducing fitting I've got one over here on the bench that I'll, I'll show you as you can see the markings on there inch and a quarter to inch and a half um, this is just one that I picked up at Home Depot uh, if you're running steam through it I don't recommend using something like this from Home Depot store. I recommend you getting something that's uh, uh, not a China made product, but get something that's um, steam rated. Uh, I mean, it won't hurt you to have one like this to start off with if you're running compressed air, but if you're going to switch this over and start using steam, this would certainly be the, uh, the little key factor I would be a little concerned of because of the type of metals they use in their castings when they machine these uh, pipe fittings. Um, obviously on your threads you're going to want pipe tape. So before you screw this on, when it comes time to hook it up, make sure you put pipe pipe tape on, uh, on all your threads, which would be Teflon tape. We have a brand here that we highly recommend and use a lot of at the whistle shop. I know the sticker's gone off of this. It's called Blue Monster Pipe Thread Tape, and it holds really well on stuff that's um, that has a lot of high heat and high temperature going to it. We use that a lot of the um, piping on boilers and on the bottom of our whistles and we hook them up to manifolds or other boilers, steam tractors and such. It works really good. It's really thick Teflon tape. Um, uh, but that's that's what we recommend and just do the same for all your threads on here when you go to put a whistle valve on make sure you um, Teflon tape them really good uh, I don't know what else to really cover on this. I think I've gone through Pretty much everything. It's uh, 10 foot long approximately three foot tall and Two and a half feet wide. It's very heavy. Uh, I myself can lift up just barely lift up the one end uh, so about three people maybe four to help you unload it off the semi truck when it gets there but otherwise uh, I'm gonna have this thing packaged up uh, here this afternoon I'm going to protect all the threads with cardboard we're gonna wrap all the threads really good the steam line will be attached to your manifold. We're going to wrap all that up really good so you don't have anything to worry about. Um, and this is going to get shipped uh, UPS freight from here in Michigan down to Texas to where you guys are at. So if you got a forklift on your end or three to four people to help you unload it, it'll be a piece of cake. 
Uh, till next time, uh, when I get more updates of what's going on here at the Whistle Shop, keep uh, keep watching on some of the stuff we do. Uh, if you want to find out more information about us, look us up on Facebook. That's the only place right now and appears to be the only place that we're going to do any of our social media. It's very easy and user-friendly. So, uh, again, it's Jason at the Whistle Shop, Waterford, Michigan. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and Francine, to everybody at the Jefferson Historic Railway, thank you so much for the opportunity to allow us to do this. Um, hopefully in the future we can do more work for you and other railroads uh, just like you. Again, thank you. Thank you very much. See you guys soon.